Over the past week, I have experienced firsthand the power of TED. I started my journey a little over a week ago, leaving my home in Austin, Texas, flying to Malaysia for TEDx, while key to Rome yesterday for TEDx Trastevere, and today TEDx Tala here in Dublin. Actually, my journey began five years ago. Five years ago, I met Kathan. Kathan was starting first grade. He was in the same classroom as my daughter at their school in Austin. And on July 11th, this past summer, after a very courageous and a very noble seven and a half year fight with leukemia, Kathan passed from this world into the next. It was in his living room that day that this crazy idea struck me. I'm pretty sure Kathan put it there. I had spoken a couple of years ago at TEDx Austin about my work inspired by this young boy as well as my wife's breast cancer. And I thought to myself, you know, what if I could go to Malaysia? I mean, Kathan was born in Texas, but his family's Malaysian and honor him with his aunts and his uncles and his grandparents where he's from. And so I went to the TED site, and it's really amazing when you look at the TED site to see just how many of these TEDx events happen in a week around the world. And lo and behold, one week after what would have been Kathan's 12th birthday on October 12th, there it was, TEDx Well Key. And as Kathan talks about in his story that was filmed by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society back in May when he was still feeling pretty good, he talked about during his second relapse how he had discovered a love of art. And actually, in my talk at Wellkey, I show some of his art. And the theme in Penang was artistry within. I had to be there. And then I realized, you know, I'm halfway around the planet, and I do have to get back home. So I wonder what other talks there might be somewhere nearby. And I landed on the Drops of Life theme of TEDx Trastevere in Rome. Their logo, basically the same drop that in red is the drop of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And I knew again, as a result of all of the volunteer work that I now do with that organization because of this kid, that I had to be there too. But then I felt like I had some loose ends. There were some ideas that I shared from both those stages, but it had to come together in some way as part of a bigger whole. And I saw the atelier of ideas, and I realized this was the place. I had to come to Dublin. I had to come to Ireland, a place that I have dreamed about being in all my life. And landing on the Emerald Isle this afternoon was just a thing of absolute great beauty. Now, I talked a lot about Kathan and the power of one person to completely and fundamentally transform a person. And that's what he's done to me. And I know he's been with me on this trip because one of his favorite movies is Alice in Wonderland. Actually, a lot of the Tim Burton films got this little kiddo through some pretty dark times in his treatments. I mean, he had three relapses. And I've watched that movie a lot. And actually, as I was picked up by um, his mom's sister, in Kuala Lumpur, and we're heading back to their apartment. Lo and behold, they're off in the distance on a billboard, the Mad Hatter. And then I was watching the film for about the last hour of the flight up here from, from Rome, and as I came out and I was going through the passports area, lo and behold, there's this little 10-year-old boy sitting on a bench, and he's got a sweatshirt on, and it's the smile in the eyes of the Cheshire Cat. And having Kathan on this journey with me, it just makes me feel whole. And in Rome, I talked a lot about this idea that we all have our Kathan, just like Orla talked about Jack. We all have at least one person in our life who can reach into us and completely change us. And what I talked about in Rome was this whole idea of Humans as raindrops. And when you think about clouds, 
There's millions upon millions of these raindrops acting together, creating tornadoes or cyclones like the one in the Indian Ocean or carving big holes in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. What could seven billion human beings being changed by one other person cause to happen? And so as I prepared for Tala, I started to think about, you know, we talk a lot about ideas, but we don't talk a lot about what happens that makes them spread. How do ideas spread? And so when you look back kind of on our history as a species, right, we started as one. That, that's how we pass knowledge on. That's how knowledge spread. The genetics of a cell were passed on to the next cell, one after another after another. And it wasn't until these cells figured out how to, to create neurons that we actually had the capacity to extragenetically, outside of the genes, start passing knowledge and keeping knowledge someplace else. Right? Someplace other than our genes. And what gets really interesting is our brains have this massive capacity to store information. But you have some information and you have some information, and you have some information that's equally valuable. So for the first time, we can now store information extra somatically, outside of our bodies. So we've gone from the genes, to the neurons, to the brain, and now we all have information that we can share. Usually, back at my house in Austin, it's I know that my wife will know where I left my keys, and, and she points out where they are. And then we made this really interesting leap. The Chinese and the Egyptians came up with papyrus. And all of a sudden, we could start to store information completely outside of ourselves as human beings. And then around about the 15, 1600s here in Europe, the Gutenberg Press comes about. And all of a sudden, we can take that capacity to pass information extra somatically, at an economy of scale to where ideas spread at an unbelievably rapid pace. And it was that movable type, that ability to move things around quickly, that started to unleash the next wave of information spreading. Now, some folks think that the internet is the big transformation in electronic communication, but it is interesting to note that the demise of newspapers was predicted way back in the 1800s when Samuel Morse came up with his electric telegraph back in the days of the dots and the dashes. And as we can tell, newspapers survived that revolution, and I think they'll survive this one too. But of course, they are going to be curated a little bit differently. But what's interesting about this whole notion of the printing press is think about the Gutenberg press, right? It's push-based. Somebody else chooses what information to spread by what movable type they choose to put together on that page. I truly believe that we are at a point that is going to be as significant as the first Renaissance. Because the movable type is no longer ink on a page. The movable type is us. It is the power of people connected. And so what happens if we have a pull-based printing press? A printing press that we're in charge of. We all have one in our pocket. We are each carrying our own printing press. But we bring it to us. And so what if there could be a new language for the internet that creates the next movable type? Not a language that makes us make pages, but a language that we can wrap ourselves, wrap around ourselves as people. And I talked a lot about that in my talk at TEDx Austin a couple of years ago, so I won't go into much more detail than that. But I think we are at a fundamental turning point in who we are as a species. So, there are some ideas that are just not worth spreading. Those are the cancer cells that killed Kathan. 
Every four minutes, somebody is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Every 10 minutes, somebody dies from a blood cancer. 7.6 million women will leave this earth this year because of breast cancer. That is not okay. It is not okay. And so, those cells that turned out pretty well, those neurons, there's a lot of those neurons that I think if we can find a way to connect them up with each other around the planet, a bit faster than these cancer cells that spread inside someone's body, we can beat this emperor of all maladies. We can beat it by coming together as people and sharing our knowledge and having that knowledge spread faster and faster. This is something a French philosopher by the name of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin called the noosphere. The geosphere, of course, is the rocks that make up the earth, those bulges that we saw in the TED talk a little bit earlier. There's the biosphere, us, the plants, the life. But the noosphere is that next step. It's us. It's finding a way for me to not just know what you're thinking, but to be truly, truly, truly connected to each other. And so the most important piece of an idea worth spreading is realizing not just the ripple effects that that idea will have in the pond, but realizing what Kathan taught me. And what Kathan taught me is, Mr. Thompson, you've got to drop the pebble. Let's all of us drop our pebble in our pond and change the world. <laughs>